In this video, we want to ask a very simple question. How can I read a book or a resource inside a Verbum Bible software? How can I drop it down out of my digital shelf and into my hand? How can I visualize it in the way that I prefer? And how can I navigate inside of it? So let's, let's approach those three tasks in turn. Open, visualize, and navigate. So first, how do I open a resource? As you can see here, I'm open to my catechism, and um, here I am reading inside of that resource. Well, the way I can access it is by coming to my library. I can simply click these three books up here at the top, and I could type in catechism. That is certainly one legitimate way at getting at the catechism of the Catholic Church. I can just click the, click the link that's here. But if you'll notice that it, it says that the, there's three letters next to the long name, and those letters are C, C, C. Well, everything can have a little shortcut code like that in Verbum. And so I could just type C, 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 and look, it goes right to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which I can now have open. If I close that, I can also use that same command here at the command box, C, C, C. And just wait for a moment while Verbum prompts you, because there's another th number of things you could do, but one of the things is you could open the catechism. So either hit enter or click that option from the drop-down menu, and here we are again inside the catechism. And uh, I can always make things bigger, I can resize the pane in this way. Okay, so that's one way. Let's say I'm reading uh, alongside the catechism, and now I want to open alongside of it the Bible. How can I do that? Well, you, sh you should know now to come to the, to the library. And let's clear my search to start from the beginning. As you can see, I have some 2,300 books inside of here. How am, I gonna how am I gonna get to my Bibles? Again, I could just type Bible and start surfing through the results to see which one I like. Um, but there's a better way, right? Look down here to the filter section. And if you're not seeing this, just come to the sidebar and button and click on and off to toggle uh, this side sidebar on and off and you'll notice that one of the filters is called type and if I see inside of there I have 394 Bibles and boy that's a lot of Bibles I wish I could filter them more by language I don't want the Hebrew and the English and the Greek and the Latin let's just say I want to look for an English Bible now I have 42 and I could scroll down and see which one I like maybe I want the RSVCE. And so I can click to open that. If you want to see it side by side, a good way is just to grab uh, the tab at the top and reposition to the left or the right as you prefer. You can make um, the column a little bit more na narrow if you want to see more of your catechism, for example. And that's a, that's a nice way to visualize it. Now, let's say the RSV is my preferred Bible. I'm constantly using it. I wish I could have a shortcut to that. And that's what we've created up here in the shortcut bar. Um, I'll just delete it and recreate it so you can see where you can drag shortcuts. Just drag the tab into this section and you'll see a little icon appear. If you wanted to show the name of the resource, just click, just right click the icon and click show label. And you can abbreviate that label perhaps if you prefer um, or you can uh, call it uh, however you like really. The catechism, let's do the same thing. Just drag and drop, drag and drop into, and, and you'll notice that if you're gonna show the, the label every time, you're gonna quickly run out of space, especially if you start to throw all your Bibles up there, the ones that you use a lot. Um, so how can you add more space to your, to, to the shortcut bar, or have a, a similar function, but without the shortcut bar? You can come to this panel menu up at the top right. <laughs> See these three, <clears throat> these three blue dots here and just come down to favorites this is easily accessible now <laughs> and you'll see that it's a, a, that I have the opportunity to make new folders and I have one here for Bibles inside of which I have four different Bibles let's say I want to open up my NAB I can do that very quickly because I've created these shortcuts if I want to add um, a, a new folder um, I can do that. Let's say I want to, I don't know, I'm, I'm making a folder for my catechism class on Tuesday nights. Well, I'm going to make a folder for catechism. As you can see, I can reposition that wherever I want. Maybe I'll put this in alphabetical order over here. And let's say I want to throw my catechism 
inside of this folder that I've just created. Notice that it's um, this shortcut navigates directly to page seven. If you want uh, to have it navigate just to the resource um, as a whole, let's say, you can just grab your catechism from the, uh, from the library and drag and drop that into your, uh, if you can drag and drop that into your uh, favorites bar. And look at that, it's, um, it's, it's, it's there present. And I can delete any, any of those resources from my favorites um, if they become superfluous at some point. Okay, so that's th those are three great ways to open a resource. From the library, from the drop-down menu, and then from the shortcuts, whether it's the shortcut bar or it's from favorites. So that's with regards to opening a resource. What can we do to visualize these resources according to my preferences? So for example, here in the uh, catechism of the Catholic Church, I notice that there are all of these footnotes. See here, there's a footnote one and two and three. I, if I want to see those um, on the bottom of the page, I can do that. I can just come here to the top right uh, where those three dots are up here and look where I have this option for columns. Well, choose, let's, let's say we want to choose two columns and, uh, and in addition to that, and I'll go ahead and make things bigger. Let's do, let's do something like that. And then in addition to the columns, I'm going to show the footnotes on the page. And this is nice. Look, these uh, one and two and three, they're all immediately visible to me. And uh, I'll close the favorites and make things even wider. And now when I navigate to John 17, 3, just by clicking this, uh, this footnote, my preferred Bible goes directly to John 17, 3. And so that, that's nice, that, the, that kind of reading view, that, that the footnotes on the page. There's also what's um, shown available here through F11. I can click F11 or I can click Show Reading View, and now it occupies the full screen, right? There's no, there's no um, tabs at the top, none of, none of the tools on the left or the right. I can just read, and, and that's a nice, a nice way to visualize things too. I'm going to hit F, F, F11 to exit out of the reading view, and just notice that I can toggle on and off these, um, these footnotes on the page, um, but I can, I can only see footnotes if I have at least one column. If, if I have no columns, look, I have one column now, I can see the footnotes, right? If I, if I change to no columns, well, uh, then I won't have any footnotes. I need to have at least one, at least one column to see the footnotes. Okay, so let's imagine that things are, are relatively nice now. What, if, what else can I do to visualize things better? Well, come up here to the, the three bars that are right here on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Notice that I can make the size smaller. I can make the font size bigger by clicking to the right or the left on, on this bar. But if I want to do that, not just in the Catechism, but in all of my resources, I can just come to that same panel menu, those same three dots uh, at the top right of the screen and look to program scaling. I can, maybe I want to turn everything up to 150, okay, because I don't know, grandma just came into the room and she has a hard time seeing things and so let's make things bigger. I'll, I'll cross the board, great. Now I'm, I'm back, I just want to see things at 100%, I'm back to 100%. If you want to get even more precise, you can come to program settings. And so program settings uh, will have a number of functions that I'm not gonna get into now. But if you scroll down to accessibility, look at this. You can change not just the program scaling, which is what we were just dealing with now, but content scaling. And watch this, let's make this smaller and see how the, the resource gets smaller. And so I can make things a lot bigger inside of uh, the content scaling with 160 if I, if I change those. So what I would suggest is figure out for your laptop what works best and then figure out maybe if you come home and you're plugged into a, a second monitor with lots of space and um, figure out which settings work so that you can, you can navigate to those settings very quickly.
what else is here? Let's go to that top right um, panel menu one more time. And notice just below program scaling, we have uh, application theme. And I'm currently set on light setting. And that means that the background of my text is white. My font is black. And this can be inverted, right? If I choose the dark setting. Say, for example, you're using your laptop at night and you want the lights down. You just want the fonts, the, the text itself to be white against a, bla a back background. You can choose this setting. Or may maybe you prefer to follow your operating system's settings for light and dark. Maybe in the morning you prefer the, the light and then at night at a, after a certain hour you want it to be dark so you can follow your, your system settings here. If that's uh, of interest to you, know that you can take advantage of those, those settings here. Okay, so I think that's what I wanted to say about visualization of the text. We could also um, look to the navigation, like how do I move inside of a text? How do I go from um, page 7 to page 354? Well, as you can see, I can simply change the, the page number here at the, at the top and hit enter and I can navigate to that page number. Of course, this is the catechism, so it's more likely that I'm, I want to navigate to, I don't know, catechism number 1127, for example, or uh, 1127, and see how that's navigating now to CCC 1127. And so there I am at that article number. Of course, in your Bible, you're going to put the biblical reference up here. If I want to navigate to Matthew 5.1, I can, I, I can do so from there. You can always use this... Um, sidebar the table of contents to navigate as well that is certainly one way to do it and that's going to be more useful in some res resources than it is with others you just need to know um, what what you're working with there for navigation it it's also often the case that you want to find something that you don't exactly know where it is right so for example let's say i'm interested to see where in the catechism Jesus talks about um, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Maybe I don't know where that text is cited, so what might you do? Well, there are a number of things you can do. One of the things that I like is the inline search. So come to the right of, uh, the, of that box there where it has a magnifying glass, and you'll see the opportunity for an inline search. Just by hovering your mouse over that, you can see that it's an inline search. And um, there's a number of things I might do. Let's, let's say I just write be perfect and I hit enter. What would happen then? Well, notice what's happening. I get a, a, a CCC 1253 here, which has the word perfect, but it doesn't have the word be in it. And it's just the other way around here in CCC 1255. I would need to put quotation marks here around my be perfect if I want to find the exact phrase be perfect. And sure enough, that's what I'm finding now. But there's an even better way to find uh, a, a, a reference to Matthew 5, 48. And that is simply by typing Matthew 5, 48. Don't hit enter. Wait for the drop down and click this um, biblical reference. It has a, a little red tag next to it. And that way when I hit enter, look what happens. It creates a code right between these caret brackets. It says Matthew 5, 48. And as I run the search here, I notice that even in footnotes, even where there is no quotation at all in the text, like here in um, Catechism number 1968, we have a footnote and saying, oh, go reference Matthew 5.48. I love that. It's a great way to find quickly where the Catechism is now offering commentary on that verse. Maybe that was the verse for today's Gospel, and I'm trying to figure out what the Church has to say about it. It's a great way to navigate there. Okay, so that's how you navigate inside of a text, whether it's um, the Bible, whether it's the Catechism, an inline search. Um, we'll talk more about searching later on, but uh, I just wanted to say this. Let's say that at the end of um, this session, you have now set up things such that you'd love to come back to this very setup. That is a setup where you have your Bible open on the left, you have your Catechism open on the right, and um, I'll get rid of extra resources just to keep things simple. I want to save this layout so that when I come back tomorrow, I have the same resources available to me. I can do that. 
all I have to do is click layouts up here in the top right and I can save the, the, this name as a named layout. I'll give it a name, I'll call it CCC study and hit enter. And now if you'll notice I'm inside of a CCC study, I think I put an extra C in there. That's okay, we don't mind too much. But um, if I close things, I don't know, let's say I close my Bible, maybe I come to a guide and I open a Bible word study, maybe I reposition tiles over here on the left and I open up uh, some personal documents, I don't know, mess things up, change it around. Um, but then when you're done, come to layouts again. And this time, just come down to your, uh, your save layout and boom, we're back where we left off. So this can be very handy, especially as you learn to create more complex uh, layouts where things are linked one to the other and you say, I don't want to set this up again. I want to leave these books just as I found them today. And so saving a layout is something that can be very helpful. More on that in some other videos.